It was a grueling campaign, covered well by the Eastern press. Over a million dollars had been spent, with little to show for the effort. I believe we found the messenger sent from Fort Wallace. You kind of kidder? What's left of him? Lieutenant Kidder was carrying orders. Cook! Sir. Look for papers. Yes, sir. Tom, ask the man from the New York Herald to come over. All that remains of good men, sir. Lying in a regular order. In a limited circle. You find the mangled bodies of Lieutenant Kidder and his company. All individuals scalped. Skulls broken, upper arms slashed to the bone. Mr. Rivers. The Lakota slashed the arm, crippling the warrior in the next life. This man won't even be able to saddle his horse. The Indian scout. He left the scalp there beside him. He was a traitor in their eyes. Brutally hacked and disfigured so as to be beyond recognition as human beings. We shall bury them. Cavalry provisions were terrible. The men were eating rations left over from the Civil War. Soldiers suffer from inactivity, restlessness, scurvy and cholera. My husband was a strict officer. Conditions demanded it. Deserters! Deserters! Deserters, General. Boy, Donald! We have deserters. Follow those men and shoot them. Then bring none of them in alive. Send a supply wagon after them. Sound assembly. Yes, sir. You wish permission to speak, soldier? Yes, sir. Granted. I've heard talk, General. Thirty men plan to desert tonight, when we're near the route to Colorado. sympathy with those men. They will receive no aid. Is this clear? <coughs> We're heading back to the fort. Form your men. We'll return to Fort Wallace! We'll return to Fort Wallace! <laughs>
I was a frontier wife, and as a young woman, I admit nothing delighted me more than to be rescued by a gallant man. Adi knew this, and when he heard of cholera epidemics at Fort Riley and Fort Wallace, he simply left his regiment on the trail and rode alone almost 300 miles to me. Perhaps it was unwise, but, oh, it was gallant. Informing me of that thing. You're not sick? No. What are you doing? How did you get here? I went to Fort Wallace and I didn't find you, so. So. I moved on. To Fort Hayes. I had to leave a few men there. To get on to Fort Harker. It's been still no life. So I came along. Oh, your men? They can live without me for a time. And here I am. The beautiful Fort Riley. I didn't marry you for me to sleep in one bed and you in another. Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer. Yes. Sir, you're under arrest. You may proceed, sir. Dr. I.T. Coates. My husband was court-martialed. He was made the martyr for an unsuccessful Indian campaign. You swear that the evidence you shall give in the case now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Very well. Dr. Coates, when you saw the deserters, did you give them any medical attention? No, sir. For what reason did you not? As I was going to it, General Custer said to me not to go near those men at that time. I stood, of course. I obeyed his orders. How long were those men in the wagon before you gave the medical attention? I suppose two hours. What kind of medical attention did you give them? I administered opiates and made them comfortable, just as I would have done on the battlefield. What was the result of the wound received by Private Johnson? That wound was fatal. It resulted in death. 